Well, we're pottering about. Um, we're nearly ready. Uh, to be honest, having the checklist is a bit of a comfort when you're really out of practice. Um, having the regularity of a routine to get back into for moving the boat and having a list of things, a list of steps which are written down and you know you're not going to miss, that helps ease you back into the routine. It's the start of the routine. It's what we do every time we're going off, we do this little routine. So I feel like we're on the first steps and yeah, we're a little nervous because we know we're going to be out of practice after six months of not sitting doing any sailing. But, um, you know, it's just the way it is. So we're, we're having a quick crafty cup of tea uh, and then it is time to head round to the fuel dock and fill up and then it's time to get off. So, <sighs> butterflies. Uh, stay there. One of the things that was not on the checklist, though, was to sling the dinghy. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's not an item we miss. We would never, we are not people who drag the dinghy behind us. We've never liked that idea, so we always sling our dinghy. But it wasn't on the list. Well, we haven't even left the fuel dock and you're already in panic mode. That was my arrival at the fuel dock, it was the panic, it went just, oh, it went totally wrong, I mean, to use a phrase, what an absolute screw up, so I'm, I'm, re I'm recovering with a restoring cup of tea, but um, it did not go well, god, I'm so rusty, it's untrue, but nothing was damaged, we got the boat on, um, I just hope it goes better later today when we go into a slip, because... Uh, that did not go well in the slightest. I wouldn't say we wound up like T-bone to the slip, but we were at a far bigger angle than we should have been. And according to Gainer, I turned the wheel the wrong way. And you know what? I'm not arguing. I could, I could very well have done exactly that. I was just... all well, sixes and sevens. Oh, what a disaster. But, you know, six months after I moved the boat last, or three months after coming around to the fuel dock, whatever. Because um, during the winter we tend to fill fuel cans and move them. <sighs> well... Oh, worse. It's like when we left last year. The first sale we were doing everything wrong. We haven't even left and you already think you're doing that now. Well, that's an upgrade from last year then. Last year we had to leave the marina to do something wrong. This year we managed to do it in the marina, so we progress. Is this the loose end? I think so. Oh God, I'll help you. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, the weather's turned, so <laughs> I'm downstairs getting some hot soup ready while Gainer cons the boat. How's it going up there? just ridiculously bad. Um, uh, I was doing the sheets earlier and I got the, I got the main halyard so messed up it was ridiculous and uh, earlier we were heading for a green patch and we decided to tack. We're now heading for exactly the same green patch. <laughs> Wind's all over the show isn't it? Yeah we tacked out and now we're heading so it's like all that tacking for nothing but that's ceiling that's exactly but we're getting it oh, how it's going in mr day where it'll hopefully stay warm oh, but what a day oh, we are so massively out of practice both of us oh, 
it's freezing. <sighs> Nose is streaming like a tap. <sighs> Picked a hell of a day to look up marinas. Well, we've just had a um, well, we've just had a coaster come past, some sort of tanker or something. Um, he showed up in the IAS. He went on a lovely, pleasing yellow colour with a nice coloured surround as well. So we passed from red to red, a couple hundred metres. Um, there was never any doubt of collision. It wasn't going to happen. But it's just nice to see that all the systems appear to be working as we expect them to. We've had to go into engine because the wind dropped to four knots and we would like to get to Abercorn Basin today rather than next week. What are you doing down there? stand off and wait for so we've been pacing up and down just outside the channel and um, we didn't really have a lot more room after the next marker boy we would run out of depth so uh, <laughs> I'm glad to be in the channel and now we're just going to belt on down to Abercorn Basin. and finally peeling myself out of the millions. A um, bit of a minor crisis with electric, we don't have any and um, all the pillars are filled up but we'll see if we can get hold of the harbour master but first things first, uh, all secured, Gator's putting the sails away, I am going to put the kettle on and get a cup of coffee because by god we deserve one. Right, well, we're back in cruising mode. Uh, we got up at the crack of dawn. It was like six o'clock this morning when we got up because we went to bed as soon as it got dark last night. Uh, but we've made it down to Abercorn Basin and, you know, we're seeing different sights already. We've come, woke up to a brilliant display of some sort of kites over there. Uh, we've been to St George's Market. We've got lots of, um, visited a lot of artisan food stalls and got some good ingredients which we're going to put in our Cook's Tier channel. And um, yeah, it's just nice to be out and the sunshine's lovely too. The Great Spray Hood Project of 2022, day 94. It does feel that way. Um, I've mainly done it. I just need to finish it off. Um, and um, that's why we're down at Abercorn Basin. Just a couple of days finishing off. And then I'll actually have somewhere to just shelter because honest to goodness, coming down the lot yesterday, it was so, so cold. Even with thermal gear. Uh, exactly. Whereas just being having that bit of spray hood, it's not much, but it just protects you from the wind, especially when it's on the nose. So uh. how have we decided to cover up the evidence of our sewing crimes? When uh, you make a mock, make up a something bad, always make it into a feature. So, um, I hadn't got the tension right on the machine. Um, 
you know, so that what it means is that I've got a lot of loops. <laughs> so <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm pulling it through to the inside and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of tape over the lot. So basically we're going to bring it to the inside where it's not visible and then cover it up. Basically, yeah. One of our copy supporters um, sent us a message to say, have a wee treat on them. So uh, we're having steak and chips and uh, we're having uh, Magna's um, cider, which is Irish, as a wee treat. So Bev, how's it all going? It's going reasonably well. Um, it's going in okay, but there's a little cock up with this particular pin here in as much as I did the outside ones first, then I did the middle one, and it turns out it's more slackness on this side than that. I should have done the middle one, and then what I should be doing is pulling these things tight as I go around. So this pin is about five mil out of position, so what I'm going to have to do is pull the pin out, clean all this off, um, put epoxy uh, filler in, and then re-gel coat it, and then re-drill the hole in the right place. But I'm going to carry on, keeping tension from the middle as we go out around the edges. And um, that's all I can do. So I'm, I'm going to withdraw this pin now and just take it back out. And it's easy to do. Well, I've discovered another top tip for doing this. And <laughs> make sure the spray hood's in the middle before you start drilling holes anywhere. <laughs> this, this side of the spray hood was about two centimetres lower than this side of the spray hood. Now we've managed to rescue it, thank God. So. Um, but it's done. I've had to re I've reset that one over there. I will refill it. But the whole thing is now at least beginning to look like it's coming into place. Uh, we've got the front ones done. Now it's a case of doing the side ones. Well, we've had a minor reversal. Um, Gainer bought two different types of um, clip to secure the hood. The ones that belong here are what we call dots. You just they look like little dots and you just push onto them. And it took me about an hour to fit five of them. They were very straightforward and easy to do. The ones we bought to go around the sides are ones that have a special twist action which would be easier to remove in a hurry because you twist them and unlock them and they just slides off rather than trying to pop the dots off. Um, but they are an absolute sod to fit and we've cracked the fiberglass gel coat on this side doing it and we're not very happy. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to write them off. I mean it's just 10 quid down the drain, nothing we can do about it. I'm not prepared to use them. And we're going to get our hands on more of the dot ones, these ones here, because I can probably get both sides fit it in an hour. But now the gel coat putty and all the rest of it has to come out and I've got gel coat repairs to do, which I hadn't bargained for. But apart from that, this part, second section here is lovely and I'm starting to see the first few spits of rain, so I think we need to crack on. I believe we had a bit of a shock. Well, I did. Um, I'm afraid to say I am not allowed out without my glasses. I um, picked this up because I was like, stowaways, stowaways on a yacht, what are they on about? <gasps> then I got my glasses and it's <laughs> talking about vermin, mice, rats, things like that, because of course it's oh snakes he got rid of, St. Patrick. <laughs> But there are some islands we visit that have no, no, no rats and things aboard and you're not allowed to land any. That's correct. Um, the smaller islands, certainly in the Outer Hebrides, there's no rats and things like that. And that's the vermin that they're talking about. And not, sorry, that's the stowaways they're talking about. And not as I'm thinking, when are we going to pick up these uh, stowaways and where are we going to hide them? And they all are going to have to hide in the starboard locker. It's big enough. It certainly is. So, okay, so we're going to get the um, stowaway inspector, the vermin catcher. Oh, she's going to enjoy that. And get get her to check all the inaccessible spots in the boat. Absolutely, girl.
Well, we're having a well-deserved tea break, and I'm glad to say that it's all gone pretty well. I reckon I've got about 20 minutes more work. The new poppers are working a lot better than the other things, aren't they? There's only one fly in the ointment in the whole process. Okay, and what's that? You're sitting on the mastic gun. <laughs> Am I? Yep. Oops! so classy. <laughs> I've got a method with the new, the new studs. What I do is I get the fabric in position and then I drill through the fabric into the boat and that drills my boat hole and marks the fabric and then I can widen the fabric hole, uh, mark the little holes that need to go through for the fasteners, whack it all in with the hammer, put the stud in, job done. It takes about five minutes to stud. Whereas that other thing that we had up forward, we struggled with it for about two hours and we just made an absolute mess. It was a disaster. Um, when I'm widening the hole I've got a bit like this and the problem is that if you use it in normal drilling mode going clockwise it just grabs the fabric and, and pulls it terribly. It's much easier to put it into undrilling mode anti-clockwise and the fabric is soft enough that this will make a hole in it but it won't grab the fabric because the drill bit's going the wrong way but it still cuts a hole through and once you've got the hole through you can put it onto normal mode and pass it in and out and just wear the hole into shape. This works very well. Well, you've joined me for literally the last stitch of my canopy project, uh, which is um, I've added these little pockets to the canvas work. Um, we're going to use it um, for basically putting our mobile phones in. Sorry, cameras, please. OK, yeah, our cameras, because <laughs> uh, that's what we use um, uh, to film all our left episodes for. Um, but... Um, Although I have had more cursing on this particular project than anything else, I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, what I did on the bottom was I replaced the entire bottom section of um, our canvas. Um, so I put in a new bottom and that's why I had to um, have tape in. And also Beverly uh, had to put in new connectors. So that's all been done. I replaced all the window glass. Um, well, it's not glass, it's plastic, but I've replaced all that. Um, a local yachty said that if I had a Sailrite <laughs> machine, I wouldn't have had as much trouble as I did. But I don't. I have an ordinary domestic sewing machine, which I bought about 20 years ago. Um, and I will be honest, this project is at, the, at its limit. So if you do have a sale right, then I think, yeah, I think it is all achievable. After all, I have achieved it even with mine.